I didn't get the thumbnail. <laughs> the heck? Oh, it did show up right there. Not showing up on the channel. All right, let's do a little quick test. Testing. There we go. Audio check. What's up? What's up, man? Hey, Ashley. I haven't watched this yet. <laughs> I was going to go to bed, but I was like, let me check this out. See if anybody's still up. Apparently, there's a new... Uh, a new interview and it's like 40 minutes long it's pretty long and it's uh ashley ashley banfield i gotta fix the stuff real quick i gotta fix the audio is good make sure we got the tags what's up man good evening how you guys doing or good night or whatever you want to call it i saw a little preview of this and he kind of snapped and popped off too a little bit he kind of snapped crackled and popped all right, all right let's do it let's do it let's just start let's start oh yeah aaron yeah yeah um thank you for the people that joined his stream joined over there he had a good amount of people i think like 2000 or something i checked a little bit 150 eastern new york i guess let's get started i heard she got him good right she was kind of busting his chops a little bit questioning him go to bed you can mel go to bed all right, I guess let's get started, man, because this is a 40 minute long. That's correct. For what if any role just hours before the star and the producer fired a deadly shot from a prop gun while rehearsing for the movie? Australia, what's up? Late night, late night. Let me share this link out. Welcome to Banfield. When the manhunt for Brian Laundry ended, a whole new chapter in this saga began. The questions that have been so confounding. Why did Brian leave his fiance in Wyoming? What was his state of mind before he left home for the reserve? And what, if any, role did he play in the death of Gabby Petito? Fortunately, I'm joined by the man who has a lot of those answers, possibly, the attorney for the Laundry family, Stephen P. Bertolino. Mr. Bertolino, thank you so much for joining us. I know um, that you've known the family for decades, so this is an emotional time for them, probably for you as a friend, uh, but you're also you know, their attorney, so I'm, I'm very thankful that you're here to answer questions on their behalf. And I'd like to just start with the simple. When did you become involved with the Laundry family as their attorney pertaining to this particular case. Yes, good evening, Ashley, and thank you for having me. Um, I would say that was on September 11th. So you didn't speak with Brian or Roberta or Chris between September 1st, when he arrived back in Florida, and September 11th, 10 days later? I can tell you I didn't say that. What I can tell you is any conversations I had with Brian, Chris, and uh, Roberta uh, would be privileged and confidential. Um, what you asked me was when did I become involved for, for this particular case, and it was on September 11th. So then presumably before September 11th, if you had conversations with them, say September 1st to September 11th, those 10 days, those would not be privileged because you hadn't been retained as counsel? Well, that's not true either, because I've been the Laundry family attorney for you know well over 20 years. Mm. So any conversations I have with them with respect to legal matters would be privileged and confidential. So when Brian came home to Northport on the 1st, as is evidenced by a card reader, a license plate reader, seeing the white van coming home, how did you have your first engagement with the family? Was it, was it a family meeting? Was it a, a, a conference call? Like, how did you first connect with them after he had, uh, had, had returned? Again, any conversation I've had with uh, Chris, Roberta, and Brian, you know, was by telephone, 
but uh, you know the dates and what we discussed uh, are all attorney client privileged and confidential and you know I'm sorry to say that uh, I, I can't speak about those things. Counselor, I fully understand uh, that you cannot reveal those uh, privileged engagements, uh, the content within. I'm just sort of going around the, the contours of it, if you'd allow me to. And that is that I'm just curious about, because you're, as I understand it, I'm, I'm talking to you in Long Island, correct? That's correct. And, and the laundries have always been in Northport. No, they haven't always been in Northport. They lived on Long Island for many years. Uh, I don't know exactly how many years they've moved down to Florida. Sure. But, uh, Understand. I, I just mean for the purpose of this particular engagement, say from September 1st on, you did not go to Northport uh, to engage with them. You, you really had to do this from afar. That's correct. Uh, everything uh, has been, you know, by telephone, text message, or um, how should we say, uh, FaceTime. Or, or, or sort of these, these group Zooms? Did you have like the family, you know, group uh, FaceTime or the group Zoom like this? No, we didn't. We didn't do something like that. Conference calls? We've had a couple of conference calls. <laughs> it almost It's almost like, and this is just the beginning, I haven't watched this yet, but it's almost like she's making him a little bit uncomfortable and stuff. Yes. And when you had the conference calls, I mean, I'm just thinking of myself as a mother. Um, and if my son were, you know, engaging with our attorney, it would be difficult, and I was curious about how Mrs. Laundrie's reactions were, how she was digesting. And again, you don't have to tell me what you were discussing. I understand that's privilege, but just the the reaction, the nature, and the the, the sort of uh, taking all of the information in in real time. How did she manage that? You know, Ashley, I, I don't want to give you a, a um, an interview where I can't answer any of your questions, but you know. It seems like most of the questions you're asking are, are going to border on the attorney-client confidentiality that I can't answer. Um, if you're asking me, you know, in general, what has been, you know, Roberta Laundrie's you know, demeanor and, and disposition over the last four or five weeks, I can tell you she's been very upset. Um, you know, she's, uh, again, been distraught. And in the last couple of days, she's grieving. Fully understand. And again, I'm not going to press you on, on what was said. I'm, again, trying to go around the outside as best I can to get uh, the, the, the color. Um. I get the super chats real quick just so I can uh, interject. Justin, Justine, hi from Sydney, Australia. Love Gabby's family and my thoughts and prayers are with both families. So sad losing a child. Thank you, Justine. Heather Williams says, letter on uh, Molly Golightly video. Uh, off, off themselves letter. Are you referring to... You're referring to this letter that's been floating around everybody's talking about you're referring to that probably um i haven't been able to confirm if that's what you're talking about i don't know that it's real or not i feel like something like this would be everywhere um but i, I have seen what you're talking about if this is what you're talking about that's just the one page there's another page the essence and, and the feel of what the family was going through in those early days between September 1st and September 11th when Gabby Petito was uh, uh, declared missing. I'll read it at the end if you guys want, but I, I, it's, it's really unconfirmed, but I'll, I'll read it both pages if you want. And even thereafter, um, up until the 13th when Brian himself uh, left for the hike and didn't come back. I guess all I'm trying to, to, to get a feel for is that the family meeting with you um, were the, 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 can I put it this way? When you had the family meeting with them via electronics, was it a happy occasion? You know, often I tell people as an attorney, I, I often don't get to deal with them on happy occasions. So, you know, you're using a term happy that I would never use. What I can tell you is every conversation has been serious. Every conversation, uh, that, you know, that I've had, um, as any attorney would have with their client, you know, doesn't necessarily border on happy. Um, and I don't mean to beat you up on the use of that word. Um, but what I can tell you is I'm not at liberty to discuss anything uh, prior to September 11th. You know, you can ask me many different ways, but I'm going to keep giving you the same answer. You know, all of that is going to be right. attorney client privilege. Anything after without September divulging, 11th, Sure. What, without divulging anything they said, were they at least all three of them um, 
you know, able to engage with you and, uh, and fill you in on their perspectives of anything that you were discussing? <laughs> on September 12th and September 13th, yes, absolutely. All three of them could fill you in on how things were going within the household. Your discussion as a group was, you know, was, was full and rich, and you could get a feel for what was happening in that household through, through your conversation with the three of them. I had private conversations with the Brian. Happy birthday, Baking and More. Hola. Uh, feliz cumpleaños. Glad you're here. She's, uh, she's pretty good so far from what I'm seeing. She's asking these questions that are kind of... Especially like the, was it a happy occasion? <laughs> I had private conversations with Chris and I had uh, prior, private conversations with Chris and Roberta separately. Um, I can tell you that, uh, you know, yeah, I had an understanding of, uh, of, you know, how the house was functioning at that point in time. But you didn't have the family together, the family unit together to uh, find out how they were coping as a unit. Uh, there were a couple of conversations where, you know, all, you know, three members of the family in that household were, were together. Yes. Okay. So presumably, and, and what days were those uh, conversations? Because it's, you know, the, the mood and the, the change in what happened in the dynamic of that family is important. What days did you have those conversations where you knew how all three of them were feeling at the same time? I would say um, Sunday the 12th and, and uh, Monday the 13th. So those are critical, critical days. Can you tell me the demeanor of uh, Brian Laundrie on the 12th and on the 13th? And when I ask you about demeanor, I'd like to try to get specific. Did he seem suicidal? No. And I literally just spoke to the family, Chris and Roberta, maybe 45 minutes ago. Um, and, you know, we repeated this, this conversation or that question. And, you know, Brian was not, you know, outwardly suicidal. And what Mrs. Laundry, what Roberta just said to me, she goes, you know, how do you really know, you know, what do you really know what somebody's thinking? And, you know, we, we can suspect what their mood might be, but what do you really know what's going on inside? Um, and I can tell you that, you know, Brian was alert. He was coherent. You know, when he was speaking with me, I, I had no inclination or indication uh, that he would hurt himself. Was I have heard you say on other interviews just in the last 24 hours that he was grieving. Yes, yes. Yeah, that's a great point that she brought up. And I think he tried to clarify. Maybe it was this one. He tries to clarify that or says it was a poor choice of words. And anyone who is grieving is sad over death. Was he sad over the death of Gabby Petito when he was grieving prior to going out on his hike, which from which he did not return? And Ashley, as, as I've said, you know, all day long, because I know I've been getting heat on the use of that word. Uh, yesterday was a very long day. The day before that was a long day. One of the last interviews I gave of the evening, which was a last minute thing, um, I used the word grieving, which I had been using all day long with respect to Chris and Roberta and the news of the death of their son. Um, I clarified that. I said he was upset. He was um, distressed. Uh, Chris described him to me as he was leaving. Uh, and this was several weeks later when Chris and I were talking about it. He said, Steve, you know, he was upset. He was distressed. Um, I, I knew I shouldn't let him walk out the door, but I couldn't stop him. Um, you know, I use the term grieving. It was probably a poor choice of words. And everybody has pounced on that and said, well, what was he grieving? Who was he grieving? You know, grieving was, you know, used by myself multiple times yesterday with respect to Chris and Roberta. And it was a poor choice of words to be using for Brian. So did, did Brian know that Gabby was dead at that point? I can't answer that question. You know, you know what Brian knew or, or didn't know uh, would be privileged, it would be confidential, and you know, certainly not something I can discuss now. And respectfully, Counselor, I understand your privilege, but as a journalist, I do have to ask, did Brian kill Gabby? You know, that's, uh, it's a tough question to answer other than no, to my knowledge, um, you know, I can't say that he did or didn't. I'm sure the FBI may be able to fill those answers in at a different time. Do Chris and Roberta Laundry know if their son killed Gabby? I can't comment on that either. I mean, what Brian told 
um, you know, when I say I can't comment, you know, you're asking me what the parents knew, what their son told them. I do not know. You have mentioned um, in other interviews that there, there will be time uh, as, you know, we move ahead in this story uh, for more questions to be answered, perhaps more secrets to be revealed. Um, clearly, there's no exposure for the youngest member of the family that you represent. He is no longer, um, he can no longer be tried for anything, even posthumously. So there's zero exposure other than uh, legacy for Brian Laundrie. For that reason, how long will it be until you can actually tell us these things? Thank you, Ooms, for the super chat. Said so other than no. <laughs> you know, as I said, you know, there are some unanswered questions. There are some issues that need to be resolved. You know, there there are you know charges out there still in Wyoming. There are certain things that um, I even discussed with the FBI today with respect to Chris and Roberta that still have to be resolved. Uh, there's been a lot of accusations. There's been a lot of finger pointing, and. You know, those issues will be resolved in the coming days, weeks, or, or months, however long it takes. You know, this is just wrapping up in the last uh, 48 to 72 hours, and we're going to need some more time to, uh, to, to work through this. Mr. Bertolino, what do you expect is going to be found in the notebook? Um, because the Northport police are saying that it is indeed salvageable. I have no idea what's in the notebook. You know, to my knowledge, the notebook was... Um, something that was maybe on the trip. Um, I, I've heard many different things about this notebook. You know, I don't know if Brian wrote a suicide note or if he wrote a goodbye note. Um, I don't know if it was just the notebook that contained drawings. Um, we'll have to wait and see what's in there. Mr. Bertolino, is it possible we might um, see a confession in that notebook? Again, Ashley, I don't know what's in the notebook. The, uh, you know, the FBI may disclose what they find in there. They may not. You are one of the last three people who spoke with him prior to him leaving with that notebook and a backpack and a dry bag. Based on his demeanor, and I'm not asking you to reveal what he said, based on his demeanor, would it surprise you if there were a confession in that notebook? You know, it, it, after the way this case has played out, I don't think anything would surprise me um, at this point. You know, even the fact that the laundries, uh, Chris and Roberta, are the ones who uh, happen to, to find the items and, and the location of the remains. Everybody seems to be suspect on that. Uh, there have been so many twists and turns in this saga. You know, I don't think anything would surprise me. T. Park, thank you for the super chat. Says, I hate him, but he's a pretty good defense attorney. It will make bank down the road when the family does first interview with network. Yeah, that's what the private investigator that we had on earlier on the live stream. I clipped it and I put it on Facebook. If anybody wants to see just the private investigator part, you can go to my Facebook page just there. Do I take that as a no? It would not surprise you if there were a confession in that notebook? I'll stick by my original comment, which is, you know, nothing's going to surprise me in this case. You, you may be bolstered to know that the Northport police back up this um, notion that Chris and Roberta simply stumbled upon the dry bag and the notebook uh, within about a 30 to 45 minute walk, uh, whereby the, the, the authorities and millions of dollars of uh, the highest tech equipment could do nothing of the sort in 38 days. For the public, it's confounding. And you have to respect just how the magnitude of, of the coincidence. The Northport police is saying it's also coincidental. But do you know any other information that would prove otherwise, that it is not coincidental? You know, uh, literally before this interview, I was on the phone with somebody who, you know, has more information about that than I do. Um, the cameraman that was there that, that filmed this, um, you know, I have thanked the police for being there. I have thanked the cameraman for being there. And yeah, I do understand that, that the, the public says this is confounding. It's unbelievable. Um, but everybody who's been there and everybody who has first-hand knowledge comes back and says the same thing. Um, this is the beginning of the, relative to the beginning of the preserve. This is where Brian was known to hike. 
um, if he went into that preserve and, and did something to hurt himself, um, and maybe he did it right away, you know, it would be expected that he would be found there. So, you know, as coincidental as you say it is, it really is not such a far stretch to say that if, if Brian uh, did in fact go to the preserve uh, to hurt himself, you know, and he did it right away, it makes perfect sense that that's where it is. The thing, uh, the park you know, was underwater. I'm sorry. Sorry to, sorry to interrupt. Do you know if he took any, um, uh, any kind of medications out with him in the backpack or in the dry bag that might have contained any sort of substances that would have um, helped him in a quest to commit suicide? I have no knowledge of any substances whatsoever, either prescribed or otherwise. Do you have any knowledge of the contents of the dry bag or the backpack? Not at all. And, you know, to my... To my understanding, the parents, uh, Chris and Roberta, didn't know what was in the bag, the backpack, uh, when Brian left the house. You know, I, I believe we were asked that question on uh, September 17th. And, you know, Chris and Roberta said they didn't know what he put in the backpack. You know, he just, you know, had the backpack packed and said, I'm going out for a hike. To that end, I want to talk a little bit about the timing of all of it because the press sort of, you know, felt a little yanked around, as did the police, with the timing of when, you know, Brian went on his hike. Originally, it was Tuesday the 14th, and then late into this whole uh, ordeal, it became Monday. I heard you speak on uh, Chris Cuomo's program the other day, suggesting that you, in fact, were the person to, to call the FBI and notify them the next day after he didn't return, which would be Tuesday, correct? So, it is correct that I notified the FBI, and, you know, you'll have to forgive me because the days were blending together, and, you know, I spoke to the FBI just today on, on that issue again, and, you know, the FBI confirmed it is well documented on their side uh, that it was Thursday, and, you know, I was reminded that uh, I specifically said, you know, Brian didn't come home, you know, tonight, you know, would you come home, you know, having all the press and everything else going on out there. The confusion initially was Chris and Roberta were telling me it was Tuesday and Tuesday night Chris went out to look for him. It was Wednesday that Chris and Roberta went to look and hiked a little bit in the preserve and it was Thursday that they retrieved the car. We then received some information some from press that indicated that they had video of the car in the driveway on Wednesday. So we had to go back with Chris and Roberto step by step of each day. Uh, they had been in their home every day. The days were. And that might have been, I wonder if that was Brian Enton's video that, that he was like, there was some press with a vehicle. I forgot that we did that whole, we covered that on a previous live stream, but Brian Enton, he was talking about when they got out there and uh, it showed the vehicle when it was there and then when it wasn't there. Tenacious State. Jay, thank you for the super chat. I find it odd how this played out and odd that his body was so gone. I don't know the area, but it just seems too simple to me. Blending together, it was very stressful. And when we went through the period and I showed them the video clip of the Mustang on the, I believe it was the 15th in the driveway. Um, you know, Chris said to me, well, then it had to be Monday. And I went back to the FBI and the FBI said, yes, you know, you know, we believed it was Monday from the beginning, uh, but we do understand that the days were blending together. So as I but this said, is my problem, the, the days blending together, and I only interrupt because I'm a mother of boys, and if my son had unexpectedly come home from a, a trip without his fiance, um, stopped talking, refused to speak to, to police, uh, she's reported missing, he is in your as you said, mistaken characterization, grieving. I mean, that tells me that he is apoplectically sad. Um, as you mischaracterized it as grieving, it is at the very least horrifically sad. And he walks out my door and doesn't come home. I do not forget that date. That date is etched in my mind as a mother. And I dare say that my children's father would feel exactly the same way. So I struggle with any mistake about what day my ex extremely distraught son went out on a hike and didn't come home. And that may be true, you know, for everyone. Um, but I would also tend to bet that you haven't been in the position that the laundries have been put in in the last three to four to five weeks. And in that week in particular, um, you know, they were in the house every day. Uh, they were going through it. You know, 
I was relying on, on the communication they had, but there was no doubt in my mind that I was the one that called the FBI. And, you know, I've had multiple conversations with the FBI, you know, initially. And I even said to the FBI, I said, I know I told you that the night of or the morning after. So I was even hedging my comments because I didn't know in which conversation I had informed them. You know, was it the night of or was it the morning after? And ultimately, in conjunction with the FBI, uh, we, we all agree that it, it was Monday the 13th. Um, you know, the proof is in the pudding, if you will. You know, in this case, the, the reporter showed me that the vehicle was in the driveway on the 15th. Uh, the FBI was, you know, saying from the beginning of our conversations with them that it was the 13th. So when we put the sequence of events together, it was the 13th, 14th, and 15th. And the, the, our Brian Enton asked uh, Josh um, Taylor of the Northport Police about all of this timeline and specifically your contention that you notified the FBI that Brian was missing uh, the day after he didn't come home. And I'm just going to ask our control room to, to play what, what the Northport Police said today about that to, to Brian Enton. It's, uh, it was Josh on, on Brian being reported missing. Um, it's, it's not a flattering um, depiction of of you and they're flat out saying it's not true so let me let me just play this moment for you and I get you to comment on the other side Mr. Bertolino says that he called and reported Brian missing sooner than Friday and that it was just the official report filed on Friday is that true I can tell you that the Northport Police Department that when we got the call on Friday that he was being reported missing was news to us I was in the room myself it was uh, a very Damn. Uh, surprising moment. Uh, I can say that with 100% certainty. Um, whatever he may have said in passing, you know, this is a situation where we're trying to, you know, they were uncooperative on Saturday, not revealing any details. We've got a missing young lady. Um, really, their credibility was, you know, what's going on there. He. If I'm understanding him correctly, he says that he may have said something to an, someone in the FBI. Um, I don't know. I don't know if that's true. Um, what I know is that none of our actions and what we've said show that that's a possibility at all. So, Mr. Bertolino, <coughs> they say the police and the FBI have been in lockstep all the way through this and that they would have known had you reported it to the FBI. How do you respond? So, Ashley, what I just heard, if you listen closely, is that um, the Northport uh, police gentleman, Josh Taylor, I believe, I don't want to get his name wrong. Is it, is it Mr. Taylor? Correct. Okay. So, what Mr. Taylor just said was that I purportedly re reported it to the FBI. He doesn't know. And therein is your answer. He does not know. I can tell you that the FBI does not have a problem with this. Today at 2 p.m., 2.15, I had a meeting with two representatives from the FBI in my office, and they once again concurred and confirmed there is absolutely no doubt that I informed the FBI that Brian didn't come home on day one. Let me tell you something else, Ashley, before you interrupt me again. I did not call anybody on Friday. I heard Mr. Taylor's press conference on Thursday. On Thursday, Mr. Taylor said, when asked a question, do you know where Brian is? He said, yes. He was asked a question a little bit later in that same presser, do you know exactly where he is? He said, yes. I was shocked. I immediately called my clients and said, do you know where Brian is? Because I don't, we haven't seen him. Was he picked up? Because if he was picked up by the PD, they would have to inform me. And they said, no. At that point, I, I, I got a, I, I'll disclose this, I reached out to somebody in the afternoon and I got a, an ethical opinion as an attorney for Brian Laundrie as a missing person, perhaps, what could I do? Once I received that ethical advice, if you will, decisions were made between me and Chris and Roberta. With that knowledge, Friday came. Friday evening, somewhere around 4.45, I received the call from the FBI. Let me be perfectly clear, unequivocally, I received the call from the FBI. 
I did not call them. It came up on the screen in my truck. I told my daughter she needed to leave the truck. The FBI said to me, we got a tip that Brian was seen in Tampa. And I said, that's wonderful, because as you know, we haven't seen him all week. We, we told you he was missing. And the FBI agent said, yes, we know that, but we want to come to the house to see if he's there. And I said, well, who gave you the tip? Who said this? Because I thought it was a ruse for the FBI to get into the house, was my belief. I then said to my daughter that I need to take care of this, and I told the FBI that I needed to take care of something with my daughter. We agreed on a time for 6.15. At 6.15, the FBI came to the laundry residence on the 17th. They came inside, we had discussions. I was here in New York and on FaceTime, um, FaceTime with them, we agreed that the best cause of action and the, the, the formal procedural cause of act, uh, course of action would be to file a missing persons report so that Brian could be located officially, so that they could put the resources into locating him. Somewhere along the line, perhaps someone from the laundry family household, and it wasn't Chris and Roberta, must have got the paperwork, called it in, got an, uh, some kind of case number. Whatever they did, I don't know. But that's how it played out. And the FBI- Was that Cassie? From, from, excuse me? Was that Cassie who did that? Cassie was not in the household at, at all. It was Chris, Roberta, there was a representative, there was two representatives, I believe, from Northport PD, there was a representative from the FBI and myself on FaceTime. For two and a half hours, we gave the FBI all the information we had with respect to Brian. The FBI has never had an issue with this. And if, if you listen closely to that clip that you just played, you will hear Josh Taylor say, Mr. Bertolino or the attorney may have told the FBI, I don't know. And here's the issue. On Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, nobody from the FBI called me and said, have you seen Brian? On Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, I did not reach out to the FBI and say, we haven't seen Brian. Because quite frankly, we didn't think he was, quote, missing. He went out for a hike. Brian had packed a bag. He routinely went for hikes for, for days. And it, it wasn't thought of that he was missing until Wednesday or Thursday, we started wondering, what do we do? And then Thursday, the events unfolded I just told you about. And then Friday, the events turned around with the FBI coming to the home. That's how it and, played and, out. And so you're just to be clear on this, because it's not. You talked to the FBI and said Brian hasn't returned on Tuesday? No, I didn't say that. I said, Wednesday? No, I didn't say that either. Mm. I said on Monday when I reported to the FBI that Brian didn't return home, the next time- No, no, time wait, that hold it. Monday, he went on the walk. That's correct. And he never returned home. And you're home. saying Monday, Monday night? You made, a, you made a reference to him not returning home or was it the next day I, you told the FBI? What, what I said to you was that I had multiple conversations with the FBI during you know Monday and Tuesday, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. <laughs> I did not recall whether I mentioned it to the FBI on Monday. Yo, I gotta take this part back. Let me just take this real quick, just this part. Was it the next day, Monday? The next no, no, day? No, I didn't say that. The FBI coming to the home. That's how it and, played and out. And so you're just to be clear on this because it's not. You talked to the FBI and said Brian hasn't returned on Tuesday? No, I didn't say that. I Wednesday? said No, I didn't say that either. I said on Monday when I reported to the FBI that Brian didn't return home, the next No, no, time wait, that hold it. Monday he went on the walk. That's correct. And he never returned. And you're home. saying Monday, Monday night, you made a you made a reference to him not returning home, or was it the next day I, you told the FBI? He did just say that. It sounded like he did. I think he's she got him twisted up, but I feel like he did just say that just a second ago, like Monday, missing. You know. <laughs> what what I said to you 
was that I had multiple conversations with the FBI during, you know, Monday and Tuesday, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. I did not recall whether I mentioned it to the FBI on Monday night or Tuesday morning. The FBI confirmed with me that their records reflected that it was Monday night. So you were talking to the FBI on Sunday, even before he went for the walk, and you were talking to them on Monday before he went for the walk, and you talked to them on Monday after he went for the walk? Okay, Ashley, you, you're, you're bringing multiple issues together. I first I'm trying to get clarity, that's all. Just details matter on this one. They do. On Saturday evening into Monday into Sunday morning at one at eleven thirty p.m. on Saturday night, I got the first phone call regarding this matter. At one thirty in the morning on Sunday was the first phone call from the FBI on this matter. At eight a.m. on Sunday was the next phone call from the FBI on this matter. It was a different agent. It was on the initial introduction, if you will, of this case on Monday. Two FBI agents came to my office to introduce himself and to discuss this case. On Monday evening and or in my recollection, Tuesday morning, I reported to the FBI in a normal conversation that Brian didn't return. Upon going back and forth with the FBI on the actual conversation in which that was reported, the FBI confirms that it was Monday the 13th that their records re reflect that I told them that Brian didn't come home that night. On Tuesday, so now, now Wednesday, that I have that up. No, hold on. I was just going to say. On clarity. Yep. On Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, there was zero communication with respect to where is Brian between me and the FBI and the FBI and myself. So he's claiming the FBI, he told the FBI by Monday, I guess is what he's saying. But it wasn't officially reported to police until Friday, and police are saying they don't know anything about it being reported any earlier than Friday, I believe. <laughs> I don't know. It's all just surprising because Josh Taylor said today they were in lockstep with the FBI all the way along. Even the Northport police chief tweeted out, get us an interview no, with Ashley, your client you on wrong. the following Wednesday. That no, no, that's again. what they told let's us today. Down. That's what no, they told us today. Play Play the clip you just played, and let's listen again where he says, I do not know, because that's what okay. he says, Ed. I'm like, telling you, they you told our Brian Enton today Ed, in, a, in a whole, I, it's a 15-minute interview, sir. It's a 15-minute interview, and they said that they've been operating in lockstep with the FBI all the way along. Okay, play the clip you played a moment ago, and let's listen to him say, okay. I don't know. You know what? Wait. We're going to wrap that clip clarity, up. Actually. We absolutely, 100%. That's why you're here. 100%, and we're going to rack that clip up. It takes a minute or so. I'm going to go to break, get the control room to do it, and after the break, we'll play it, and we'll get the clarity on that. Is that okay, Mr. Ber Berlino? That's fine with me. Okay, we'll see you in just a few minutes. <laughs> Yo, she knows what she's doing, too, though. She does. They, they, they kind of had him. They prepared for this. They had his ass ready, locked and loaded to, to get his ass. They had that clip ready. News Nation had that clip from earlier, talking to Northport police. They had all that shit. Sorry. <laughs> Locked and loaded. Bruh. And right, we're going to take a look at that interview, too. We are back with um, Stephen Bertolino, uh, the attorney for the Laundry family. And Mr. Bertolino, the, the, the clip that we played is a full minute long. But the person who actually conducted the interview is Brian Enton. And he Bro. has a full characterization of what the Northport police told him for 15 minutes during that interview. So I'd like to turn it over to Brian Enton for a moment to tell you exactly what they told him. Brian, uh, Mr. Bertolino's on with the two of us. Uh, hi, Ashley. Hi, Mr. Bertolino. I've been in touch with Mr. Bertolino for the last five or six weeks. Um, so um, basically, uh, Josh Taylor with Northport Police has said that the way he has phrased it, that they are at the, at the same table, sitting at the same table every day as the FBI, sharing information, constant communication with each other. And I was thinking back to that week when, uh, when the police chief had that press conference. On that Thursday, the police chief said that he, had, uh, that he knew where, where Brian Laundrie was. But it wasn't just that Thursday. That almost every day when I interviewed Josh Taylor, uh, I would ask him, do you know where Brian 
Brian Laundrie is? And he would say, yes, we know where he is. Um, so I was just listening to your conversation between the two of you, um, and it's just those those interviews we did, and not just us, but many outlets were doing them with the police. They were on TV every night, and it's just hard to imagine that the FBI w was also watching this and, and you know, had this information for Mr. Bertolino, but wasn't sharing it uh, with Northport PD. Good evening, Brian. How are you? <laughs> yeah. Good, good. Nice to hear your voice, Mr. Bertolino. Bless you. I, I, Bro. I didn't, uh, I didn't, wasn't sure if it was my turn. And, and Brian, <laughs> you know, I concur. It would be hard to believe that, right? So two days ago, I had a conversation with somebody in the Northport PD to clear the air on this one as well. And I offered to put myself on speaker so that brass could hear it, so that the upper echelons could hear it that I wasn't trying to, quote, put the Northport PD under the bus when I brought this up. They told me, in no uncertain terms, that they had no idea that the FBI knew about this. They were completely shocked, completely shocked on Friday to learn that Brian wasn't in the house. So, Brian, everything you say makes sense. Absolutely everything you say makes sense. But I will tell you, it is not my responsibility to communicate between the FBI and Northport PD. I can tell you once again, as sure as I'm sitting here talking on this screen, the FBI confirmed in my office again today at 2.15, this is a non-issue for them. They have it documented that Brian was reported missing by me to them on Monday evening. My recollection was it was either Monday evening conversation or a Tuesday morning conversation, but I know that I reported it on day one. That being said, Ashley, you told me you would replay that clip. What you chose to do was bring Brian Enton in. I would ask you respectfully, let's play the clip. Let's hear, not from Brian, let's hear from Josh Taylor once again. I can spare the okay. minute. Um, let's you got, play it. Well, you want you, you, we've had, yeah, the we've got, we've had 40 with Yo. you, but the control room is about to play it. So control room, fire let's away, let's roll. I don't know. Let's listen to Mr. Bertolino says that he called and reported Brian missing sooner than Friday, and that it was just the official report filed on Friday. Is that true? I can tell you that the Northport Police Department, that when we got the call on Friday that he was being reported missing, was news to us. I was in the room myself. It was uh, a very uh, surprising moment. Uh, I can say that with 100% certainty. Um, Whatever he may have said in passing, you know, this is a situation where we're trying to, you know, they were uncooperative on Saturday, not revealing any details. We've got a missing young lady. Um, really, their credibility was, you know, what's going on there. He, if I'm understanding him correctly, he says that he may have said something to an, someone in the FBI. Um, I don't know. I don't know if that's true. Um, what I know is that. None of our actions and what we've said show that that's a possibility at all. Do you see what you they said? Nothing that they Ashley? say says Ashley. that it's a possibility at all. I mean, did you hear that last line, Mr. Bernalino? Nothing that yeah, we've I seen says that's a possibility at all. What he said was he may have said it in passing, and then he said, I don't know. That's what he said, Ashley. I'll take No, he said it's not now. a possibility at all. No, he didn't say that. Not with Can I ask Brian Enton, question, did he Ashley? say? Mr. Yeah, I think we should get Brian Enton, and he conducted the interview. He sent us the tape. We've now played it twice. Go ahead, Brian. Well, I just had a quick question for Mr. Bertolino that I was thinking about. I mean, if he was at home watching the news all week and hearing the police say that they had eyes on Brian and the laundries were, were watching the news or were hearing from Mr. Bertolino that the police were saying that, but if they were worried about Brian and he was missing and, you know, they wanted him to be found, like, wouldn't you want to correct the record so that people would actually be looking for Brian? So, Brian, we're not going to get to the bottom of this. You know, I'll get past the fact that Ashley won't concede that what was said out of Josh Taylor's own mouth was that I may have said it in passing and that he does not know. Let's move past that because the tape speaks for itself. What I will tell you, Brian, is we were not, at that moment, we were not concerned that Brian, you know, had hurt himself or wasn't coming home. You know, 
Chris and Roberta had indicated to me that Brian had gone out camping and hiking for multiple days, many, many times. He was a young man, they weren't concerned. They thought he was clearing the air, clearing his mind. It wasn't until we got the call on Friday that there was a tip he was seen in Tampa that we were concerned. Then why did you why did you report it to the FBI, Mr. Brutal? You know, if they, they thought he needed to clear his mind and he's an avid hiker and camper, why were you calling or talking to them on Monday night or Tuesday morning saying, yikes, he hasn't come home? Why, why is it an Ashley, issue? Nobody, Ashley, nobody said, yikes, he hasn't come home, Ashley. So let's Why would you that, report okay? it to the FBI if he didn't no, come home, Ashley, if he just needed to clear his mind? Lose the word report. I was having conversations with the FBI a couple of times a day on those few days. What I said to you was, in my conversation with the FBI, either Monday night or Tuesday morning, I mentioned to the FBI that, by the way, Brian didn't come home. As part of that conversation, I was reminded today from the FBI, he said, yes, I remember distinctly because you said to me, would you come home with all those press in front of your house? He okay, got it. Contacted so, the FBI specifically if I can, of that I That's what it's going to take, I think, for the FBI to like maybe respond and answer themselves. Is that true? Is it not true? Keep you over the break. I'm I'm losing commercial breaks, and it's a it's a machine I can't stop. But I do want to ask you after the break about the Northport police saying that they lost him, that they just they just screwed up, and they didn't see him leave to the to the reserve, which you know ended up with a a dead man in the reserve. I want to get your reaction to that. We're back with Stephen P. Bertolino and Brian Enton after the break. All right, Mr. Bertolino, quick question. Uh, the police said that they lost your client. There was surveillance on him, and when he went off to the reserve, they didn't even notice the Mustang uh, leaving. Does that mean that Brian Laundry is dead because the police lost him, or is Brian Laundry dead because Brian Laundry did it to himself? You know, Ashley, you can't blame the police. You can't blame the FBI. You can't blame the parents. I've had people blaming me for the last couple of weeks, and specifically the last couple of days. Um, you know, bottom line is we don't know the manner or cause of death of Brian. We can surmise, um, but let's take a hypothetical and say that Brian did, you know, take his own life. If that's the case, you know, that's on Brian. It's not on the parents. It's not on the FBI. It's not on the police. It's not on me. Um, and I think we need to wait and find out exactly what happened. Uh, the parents don't blame the police. You shouldn't blame the police. Um, and, and that's just wrong. I have to squeeze in another break, and I have one final question for you. Uh, we, we've blown every break out in the show, so if you'll permit me, right after the break, I'll be back with our final question uh, with Stephen P. Bertolino. Uh, back with Mr. Bertolino, uh, the laundry's lawyer. Um, Stephen, th there's a critical question here. I have two minutes left until the end of the show, but I, I must get you on the record on this. You told me at the beginning of the show that you spoke with the laundry family together on the 12th and the 13th of September, that's Sunday and Monday, and he went for his walk on the Monday. Um, but if you spoke with all three of them together, there is no privilege, and, and you know that as a lawyer. So what did Brian say about what happened to Gabby Petito on that Sunday and that Monday before he left for the swamp. Okay, so Ashley, if you heard what I said, I had multiple conversations with the laundries. I had private conversations with Chris, private conversations with uh, Brian, and I had conversations with Chris and Roberta, and I had conversations with them together. You know, I know these people. Some of parts of the conversations when they were all together had nothing to do with attorney-client privilege. And a when lot you to do were together, what did up. he tell you? Because there's no privilege when you're all together talking. And you did say on this program that you did have conversations both days with them all together as a family meeting. What did they tell you? Because that isn't privileged. I disagree. I think, you know, I, you can represent multiple clients, as you know. You can get waivers of representation, as you know. No, you so, can't. You can't have that conversation in criminal proceedings, and that, that does mean that the, the privilege is waived. You can do it in real estate. And, you know, gosh, will you come back on Monday? I have 22 seconds left until the black cutoff of this program happens. But I have not finished my conversation with you, Mr. Berlinda. Would you come back Monday? I don't think that's possible. Someone else mm. wants me yes, on it Monday. Has to be. I don't know why. I, I'm calling you Monday, Mr. Berlino. Thank you for spending the hour with us. Have a good evening. Hell no, I won't be going back over there.
Bro, they 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 set him up. Oof, they lined him up nice. Holy crap! He wasn't expecting that. They had all the, the clips ready. They had Brian Enton on standby. They had oh man. Oof, it's like they're working with the cops or some shit with the feds. Um, that interview. It lined his ass up. Holy crap. Is this the full interview? Was it longer or was this it? I wanted to take a look at this Northport thing. I thought she did good, man. I thought she did good. It lined his ass up though. Nasty. That's that's the the danger that you take sometimes going on another platform. I mean he's been he's been doing a, a press tour. Speaking to all the news and er and everybody. And he did exactly what he did. He went against everything that's been working for him, and that's talking. Now he did too much talking. If you guys wouldn't mind hitting the like button, I'd appreciate that. It really helps out the, the channel and the video. I know it's super late. I appreciate you guys coming. <laughs> Random. I was deb debating on whether to go to bed or stay up, but I want to watch the interview. Uh, Miss Hurley. I watched your channel more than any other streaming app for weeks now. Thank you. Definitely owe you. I appreciate that. Must respect you for you and your hard work on these stories. Thanks. Thank you. Appreciate that. We got to do an update on Australia, girl. I don't know what's going on with that, man. It's a really bizarre, weird story. Uh, Steph W., the Northport Police Department was still in charge then. Why wouldn't the FBI have informed the PD he was missing? That's weird, too, and bizarre. And I was just like, why wouldn't he inform the, the police department? I think the FBI is going to have to respond to that, maybe. Nate S. Mod silencing polite disagreement is a bad look for Mel. House cleaning is in order. House cleaning. Uh, I'll have to take a look at the chat later and see. Thank you. Um, Sister Sherry, $5 late night liar fight. <laughs> Thank you. Ali, Ali Nolani. Actually coming in with the receipts. Just so sweet. Thank you for the super chat. When this slows, can you look into the 1982 Johnny? I'll try. I've been getting so many requests lately. I'm bombarded with requests. But definitely when things slow down with uh which it is kind of happening a little bit. We'll take a look at that. Lynn's 10. When Bertolino says FBI said, why would he come home with all the press outside? What press was there out on Monday? True. Brian Enton wasn't there until Wednesday. Love the real estate dig at the end. That's true. Brian Enton did show the video footage of what it was like out there. I believe it was one of the first people out there, and it was empty when he got out there. There's the interview here. They got him, though, man. News Nation. Damn. They lined him up. They were ready for him. Mm-mm. And how there was this five week search and then all of a sudden the laundries <laughs> go out at 7 a.m. And less than an hour later, personal items found and then the remains. Do you I mean, are you looking into that? Is that strange to you? This case from the onset has been odd. We've said odd over and over again. So it almost seems par for the course in this. Unfortunately, um, I think it is a coincidence. That's my mm. belief uh, wholeheartedly. Do you think the parents knew that Brian may have gone out there to commit suicide? Do you have any information that they've known that all along? I, I, I think that that's been on the table uh, from the beginning. Uh, I think that that is certainly a possibility. Was Brian Laundrie followed by police to the reserve? No. Our intention was to keep an eye on Brian and clearly him uh, going out there uh, we missed him going out there. So he left in the Mustang and no one knew that he left in the Mustang. That's correct. I mean, isn't it? I mean, we've been outside the house. I mean, it, was there just no one sitting outside the house watching? I mean, did someone like fall asleep? Yeah. I mean, how do you, it's not like you snuck out the back if he left out in the front in the yeah. Mustang. Well, again, he, he wasn't wanted. You, you, there's certain things you can do with surveillance and intelligence when you're at a certain point in an investigation, when there are certain charges where there's these types of things. Um, you know, it just, uh, we weren't there at that point in the case. Cause of death for Brian Laundrie, 
will we ever know based on the condition of the remains? I think so. I think that that'll be something that they piece together. Uh, you know, there was bones um, scattered around. Uh, so I think you have to put all that back together and then work on those, those details. Do you know if there was a gun found? Uh, I have no permissions to reveal anything uh, other than what's been said as far as what was found there at that location. What is the status of the notebook? Uh, that's kind of outside of my purview here at the Norport Police Department. Certainly the FBI has that. They will utilize every tool that they have uh, to make sure that it's handled with care. Um, it was wet and uh, certainly making sure that's dried out and been able to go through will be very important. Do you know if is anything in it legible at this point? Do you know? I believe that there are some things that can be revealed from that. I'm, I'm not pervy to exactly what's in there. I know that Northport PD is, has really been under the microscope and a lot of people are upset. You know, I mean, the, the Brian Laundry went disappeared and, and you know, the, the search didn't result in anything. I mean, do you think mistakes were made? Is Northport PD owning some of this? Uh, sure. I mean, I don't know that any investigation works 100% like you want it to, 100% perfectly. Uh, what I'll say is that we were the ones doing everything in our power to get answers on this. This was not, you know, if mistakes were made, there's human error involved with every investigation. It certainly wasn't from a lack of taking it seriously or hustle or knowledge. It was just uh, sometimes things happen. And Brian, one of the big questions is how did Brian Laundrie slip out uh, from underneath uh, their, their view when he was at the home? You have now learned that they've got cameras set up outside the laundry home. Police do. Yeah, we've known this for quite some time, that there are these hidden cameras around the house. Uh, we discovered it close to a month ago, but obviously chose not to report it because no one knew where Brian Laundry was at that point. We didn't want to interfere with the investigation. We know of at least two. There was one behind the house put where Brian Laundry was at that point. We didn't want to interfere with the investigation. We know of at least two. There was one behind the house put in a neighbor's yard. There's another camera that was actually hid uh, in a dumpster. We're told that at least some of the cameras did go up before Brian Laundry disappeared. And they're not saying yet what those cameras reveal. Brian Enton, live for Correct. us in North. So there was these cameras they had set up. Um, Brian Enton posted this earlier. If you guys wouldn't mind hitting like, I'd appreciate that. Por favor, gracias. It says, one thing I held off, one of the things I held off on reporting, but now will because Brian Laundry is confirmed dead. Police installed hidden cameras around the house, including this camera in a neighbor's yard behind the house. This particular camera was installed after Brian went missing. Uh, but he did post something else here too. Northport police today talked to me about the cameras. They say there are other cameras that went up sooner before Brian disappeared. Sounds like they're covering themselves. Huh? What the polls say? So... Okay, so the poll says, should Antifa continue protesting outside the laundry home? 64% uh, said no, 35% said yes. Damn, ain't playing around, huh? Hey, we got the camera set up. Now, uh, just so sweet, thank you for the super chat. Do you think the laundries wish they did things differently? Seeing your child behind bars is better than never again. Seems a better option to me. That's a good point. Yeah, I have no idea what they're thinking. It's a possibility. Possible. Um, the other thing, so again, this is really with a super grain of salt. I saw this earlier. People sent this to me. I don't believe this is real. I feel like this would be circulating everywhere if it was. I just don't see this being real. But this started circling around the internet. People were claiming this is this is the letter, Brian Largie's letter, his last letter to mom and dad. 
I don't believe this is uh it, but I'll read it, okay? But just heads up, grain of salt. Um and it's really hard to read. I just wanted to say that I'm sorry for everything that has happened. I never intended for any of this. Gabby and I were truly in love, and I would give anything yeah, move myself away. For her to still be here. I know that no one will understand that that things simply got out of control. And I, again, I, I don't think this is real. Um, I don't even know what that says. The something of our relationship was more than I could bear. I should have known to stay home. After what happened in Moab, everything was already, uh, I don't even know at the point of, of sending made return. I don't know if somebody wants this, I'll send it to you. It's just really uh, hard to, it's like a, I guess they took a picture of, uh, something on a screen, but like I said, I had a grain of salt, grain of salt, please forgive me for all that has happened and all that I have put everyone through. I was too ashamed to tell Gabby's family what happened to her. I mean, this is somebody trolling. I think it's pretty sick, kind of disgusting, you know? Um, I hope someday people can understand what really happened. Until we meet again someday, I love you forever. B. So that's, the, that's, that's what's circling around the internet. That's what everybody's talking about. Uh, let me see if there was something else. I thought there was one more thing. Protesters are pissed off, man. They went out there again today, or yesterday, I should say, because now it's almost three in the morning. They were out there protesting. People are saying, well, the attorney was saying, give it a break. He was pissed off. I was going to put a video together, but uh, let me show you real quick a little snippet, and then we'll call it a night because it, it is. I think it's probably a troll. Yeah, I don't think it's real. I think it's fake. I saw it and I looked in and I was like, eh, meh. The only real reason I came out was because of the uh, the Bertolino thing. I was like, meh. Can I play this as a preview? And things are dwindling, but they are still here today. There was a study stream of them earlier, and they're not here now. Um, and they've kind of put signs and flowers here, kind of creating a memorial to Gabby. Uh, but if you take a closer look at some of these signs, it's actually taunting the Laundry family. And the, the family attorney came out today and said the couple, they've done nothing wrong. He says they deserve privacy. Um, and he's asking people not to jump to conclusions. If, if they haven't gone home already, they should go home. This protesting this witch hunt, this mob style crucifixion of Chris and Roberta Laundry, you know, is just wrong. And, you know, enough is enough. They started at the beginning of the preserve. It just so happened that that's where Brian was. So my thought would be anybody who's questioning that, it's not too bright. What the public doesn't understand, I don't understand. You have a trailhead. The trailhead marks the beginning of a trail. You don't jump from the sky and land in the middle of the preserve. You start at the trailhead. That's where the parents started. The parents were... That beginning clip was him snapping. The, that beginning clip was from today. That was new. This clip is just clips, old clips of the protesters and him snapping yesterday. I kind of put it behind. Walked into the park from the entrance to the park or the trailhead. They went about a mile or so. And that's where they found the items and the remains. What is so difficult to understand about that? So once again, I don't understand what the public doesn't understand. Everyone 
from the FBI to local enforcement to news reporters to the laundry family has confirmed that area of the park was underwater. I am told that it was waist deep at some times. So from four to five weeks ago being completely underwater, when the search teams went through there, <laughs> what did they expect to find? Now that the water has receded, the woods off the trail are more accessible. It's not very difficult because it's very simple and the public doesn't understand simplicity or the truth, you want to make something of it. Imagine what the public would be thinking if the police weren't there. Imagine what the public would be thinking if a lot of this wasn't caught on video. And still, with an independent reporter and a representative of law enforcement from a local agency, a representative from the FBI being present, and you still have these nonsensical people putting forth ideas that certain items were planted. Marnie, I thought I was very clear in just explaining to you why. If, if you've got the FBI, the local PD, an independent news reporter, all there at the same time seeing the same thing, you've got quote unquote surveillance of the laundries 24 seven by protesters and, and people of the press. When did you think this, the, these items were planted? And do you really think the, the laundries had skeletal remains of their son, you know, in a plastic bag and brought them to, to the preserve? <laughs> do you realize how ludicrous that is? How aggravating, how maddening it is to even hear those things? And the fact that it's being put out there by the press as well, maybe somebody with a platform should step up and say, hey, knock it off. This is just silly. So if I'm the only one who has to say that this is hogwash because I didn't want to say the word bullshit, then I'm going to say it. It's bull. And I'm sorry if John Q. Public doesn't get that. They were just told less than oh a half hour God. ago that their son is deceased. Do you think that they really have thoughts on anything other than that their son is no longer with them? There are people in, in your position, maybe not you, but in your position that never once pushed back on these so-called experts and pundits who did nothing but say, this is immoral, this is unethical. Somewhere along the line, somebody with a platform, someone in your position should have said, hey, you know what, back off. This is America, and in our system of justice, they have the right to remain silent. So I'm kind of a little perturbed that now I have to go back and explain how we didn't plant remains and personal items in a preserve when the upper echelons of law enforcement is telling everyone this is legit by their actions, by their words, and yet we have to now go back and somehow educate John Q. Public? And you guys perpetrate this. Oh my God. No, I was working, I didn't get to finish it, but I was like starting to work on something. But uh, yo, he was popping off, man. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen from here. We're just waiting to see the results. You know, what's, I mean, I don't know the cause of death. If we ever even find out, congratulations to Aaron. Uh, I think he almost got 2000 subs today. Aaron, congrats, man. YouTube. Uh, or he passed it. I think, I think he passed 2000, 2.5 or something. Um, I think that's it, man. I'm tired. I'm ready to go to bed. I, I think Ashley did a good job, man. I think she, but what they did was they, they set this dude up. They really did set him up. They plotted on his ass. They had a whole corporate corporate team over there assigned to uh Steven Bertolino. And they, they, they pulled a, I don't know what they call it. The oop, the something. Oop, the woo. The oompa loompa. I don't know. what Oompa loompa. <laughs> I don't know. Whatever they pulled on him in, they pulled one on his ass. <clears throat> I don't think he'll be going back up there again. She did good. She did good. I think she did good. Um, she, they're gonna have to wait on. I mean, if if the FBI will respond, and if that's true, what he's saying, you know, I don't know. <laughs> I don't even know what it's called. The whoop doo. There you go. <laughs> Whatever the the kids call it, man. I don't know. <laughs> Oompa Loompa. That was a weird uh, movie. I watched that the other day again. It's been like a really long time. It's a weird movie. 
the Oompa Loompas were weird. What I, what I thought was even weirder is that they changed them in the preceding movies. It's like a, a different, right? What do the Oompa Loompas look like? Oompa Loompa. They, they, so they changed it to like this weird, like, uh, I think that I like the originals more. I don't like the, the other one, the, the Indian guy, the Indian one. Look, I don't know what he is, but they got the regular Oompa Loompas, the classic Oompa Loompas. And then they got this, like this guy. I mean, I guess they're both weirdos, but uh -huh. this guy's weird too, though. Maddie was tripped out and watching it. She was like, what happened to the kids? Especially the, the blueberry girl. She ate the gum or whatever she ate. <laughs> I guess we'll wait and see, man. I don't know if the protesters are going to keep going back out there. Because I don't know what really... I mean, I don't think they're going to force an answer out of the, uh, out of the laundry family. I don't see it happening. The attorney, I feel like the attorney was doing good until now. I know people don't like him and all that stuff, but I feel like he was doing his job until now. They they really sunk him tonight. They sunk his ass. Battleship. I was so surprised to see that. And they, they, Brian was all ready, too. That whole thing, they had him on standby. Yeah, Brian on standby. And Brian's been on out there since like day one. And he's been in person interviewing police and whoever else. And they probably have a relationship. A lot of times the police has relationships with media. It's not uncommon for them to have relationships with media. <laughs> John Q public. Oh my god. Lynn's thank you for the super chat. This lawyer's been popping off. He's been snapping. He's been snapping. I don't think it's gonna do him any good anymore. I think he's done enough in the media. I mean, but like, like I say, he did mention that, I mean, he, he, police did say that, like, supposedly they had eyes on this guy, Brian, and apparently they, it seems like they didn't. So there's some, there's some contradictions there too. I feel like, I mean, I, I don't remember off the top of my head, the timeline, but I feel like at one point they said like they had eyes on him, I guess not the best eyes or they were limited to the surveillance that they could do. And now they're popping up with these cameras. The one they showed us was after the fact, and they're claiming there was one that was put before the fact. Is this like damage control now or just like, I mean, they're both dead, but like, so one person or department doesn't look as bad or something like that. You know what I'm saying? It's like the public kind of came and put things together, red, white, and Bethune. And then, um, the parents, I mean, millions of dollars later, you know what I'm saying? With all the high technology, what they call that thing, the dragonfly drone. Is it dragonfly? Dragon something. drone go 60 miles an hour super fast with op uh, optical lunar vision and stuff and all this technology and these trucks and all this shit and the parents come out there in an hour boom boom done I'm like wow that's it that's it and i'm not shitting on cops i'm not against cops or anything like that it's, I, it's, I can only imagine the work it must have been but I'm just saying, it's crazy. It's crazy to think, you know, just like, they just come in there. Bloop, bloop, bloop. Yeah, we out. And all the sightings, man. All the sightings. People having guns pulled to their heads. All the white bald men attacked. Bro. Remember that one guy, his room, they, they didn't they bust the door in or something? Or they pushed it? Or the door was unlocked. They came in there, had guns drawn. Damn, bro. Somebody could have got killed. Uh, Lynn said we can't trust Kevin McClaster, Home Alone, robbing ass. <laughs> Who's Kevin McClaster? That's not home. That's not the guy from Home Alone, right? Wasn't that guy something else? His name? I forgot his name. Oh, that is his name, Macaulay. Macaulay Culkin. But his name in the uh, was his name in the show, Kevin. Or who the hell is that? Or did he change his name? That was a classic movie. I remember that movie when I was growing up. Home Alone.
Yeah, they said they said Brian Laundry was. There's still. Let me tell you, there's still people that believe he's alive. I was literally getting Instagram messages. I was getting emails. There's people saying that they think he just replaced his teeth, that he took out his own teeth, left it there, and got new teeth put inside. I had somebody tell me that the, he just cut off a part of his head and left part of his head there. Like, but people are actually seriously telling me things like that. I was like, wow. They think he's alive. I think a lot of people just can't grasp or come to terms with that's him. Like, that's it. That's true, Leslie. John Walsh did tell Brian multiple times all over the news and TV everywhere. That Alec Baldwin situation is kind of crazy. I heard he was uh, pretty down or something. I guess it was a gun prop and they had um, they had blanks, I guess. But I guess it was too close to the person. There's a certain distance, I think. I think that's what I heard. I haven't looked into the story myself. But, um, Alec Baldwin shot on a prop, uh, on a set, shot and killed somebody. Accidentally, they say. Joe Pesci. Oh, is he? Really? I think you're right, actually. Joe Pesci is the Home Alone burger. Burglar. <laughs> burger. He was one, right? One of the... Yeah, there we go. I think that's him. <laughs> yeah, Joe Pesci. No, I'm not going to eat now. Did you see the video on the dingo? No. What? Is there a video somewhere we can see that real quick? Dingo... I thought people were trolling me about that, but it's a real thing. Oh, crap. There's a whole 60 minutes episode on Australia. Wild dingo steals baby while parents sleep. This was two years ago. And I maybe is that where the joke or reference comes from? Dingo ate my baby. Yo, I don't know what's going on in Australia. Australia's kind of looking. I mean, I, I love you guys, but. Wild dingo. Steals baby while parents sleep. Check this out here. Abandoned toddler rescued and raised by feral dogs. Australia. Oh my God. Is this for real, yo? Mom poured bleach down baby's throat so she could get a good night's sleep. I mean, I can't really say anything about Australia. Look at us, right? Oh. Male. Brian Laundry's last letter to parents. Could this be real? Probably not. I did see it floating around, though. It was going everywhere. <coughs> Well, I'm going to get some sleep, man. Florida, man. Did you guys see that guy that the, with the gator? They got a gator in the in the trash can, put the gator inside. He, he like, subdued a gator, like, tricked it and put a garbage can over it. That was pretty crazy. That was wild. Can I do one call? Uh, Can I do one call? Can you email me and send me... I don't want to open the lines because then it's going to be like flooded. Maybe. I mean, it's late. But if you could email me or something, I could just call you directly. Send me an email. My eyes are like kind of burning a little bit. Rest. I can't log into my uh, email.
Uh, oh, looks like my email server is down. They're doing maintenance. If you could send me to my Gmail, maybe, or inbox me somewhere, Twitter, Facebook. One caller that yeah the Gmail one the, the it can mail it it can mail for some reason is down apparently. Silvio. <laughs> Four forty a.m. Oh my God, Brittany, you gotta be tired. Good night, Ashley. Oof, 3 a.m. Yeah, it's 3 in the morning here. Gonna sleep in. Yeah, I saw they found Cookie Sims. She deleted the video. That whole video that she was talking about with all her DB situation and um, accusing the father of all that stuff, she took it down. So uh, I don't know. I don't know what's going on with her. Maybe she's just trying to get help and moving on. Oh, okay, I got your number now. I see you. I see you, baby. Remember that song? Late night call. Okay, you want me to call you out? Okay, you sure. Are you sure? All right, I think that's it, man. So we should get some rest, get some sleep. Late night. <laughs> um usually it could mail it could mail is best it could mail it mail com. right now there's like it's down for maintenance for whatever reason that's like the private server that i have it could mail it could mail com. but for temporarily if you need something faster you can send it at it can mail at gmail.com this maintenance is going to be for two hours so it'll be down for two hours you can still send something now it'll come later But yeah, thank you guys so much. Have a good night. I'm going to get some rest. I'm tired. All right. Thanks for joining me. Take care of yourselves. Hit the like on the way out. Peace.